and we offer our blessings for them as we present our mothers to the altar of our worship this morning. Mothers have a strange and mysterious power. Mothers are the one who connects between us and into this sometimes very harsh and very challenging world and embracing us with in her arms. Mothers always has nurtured us, uh, encouragement and, and assure us that things will be all right. And so this Sunday, we dedicate and celebrate Mother's, Mother's Day. And, uh, and uh, part of what I would like also to share with you in my sermon is how then we can place them in their honorable and sacred place that God has given them as the uh, inevitable sort of right and gift for them. Um, somehow, all our church members who are sitting in this side of the pew, I know Doris and Viola, they are in, they are in Florida celebrating Mother's Day with extended family members there. And uh, Kathy is away to California. Um, and some of us are really celebrating Mother's Day across the nation. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, we will celebrate all our mothers today. And so as we present our mothers with heartfelt thanks and prayers and blessings for them, um, let us approach to the throne of worship because God is pleased with a true worshiper. And true worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth. So brothers and sisters, let us worship God with a thankful heart to honor all our mothers. Good morning. Please stand if you're comfortably able and join me in the call to worship. Today we celebrate our mothers, grandmothers, aunties, and all the women who have loved us. Thank, Thank you, God, for being a mother. We remember with deep gratitude all the ways they have demonstrated their love for us. Sometimes we cannot understand that, but we know that God understood. We take time to remember our mothers because mother's love is most like God's love. For their tears, for their loss, for their wisdom, for their unfailing trust in our dignity. We give thanks today. The first hymn is number 41, O Worship the King, verses 1, 2, and 5.
The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Let us confess our sins in silence. say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Believe in the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Christ be with you. And also with you. Please <laughs>
us, we could just play it from the laptop to the kids. We, we have audio. We do have audio. Okay, we have audio. Do they, I just kind of pointless to have all the kids come to the front, I guess. Um, stay seated. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes sense because the audio is routed through the connection. <laughs> would like to encourage all the children to follow Monica for your Sunday school activities. But please make sure to be back here for our community sharing time. And our children's director, uh, she is attending a wedding of her cousin in Connecticut. And since she doesn't have her own car, I think it is seems to be a very challenging to make it back from Connecticut to here via public transportation. So just would like to ask you for kind understanding. Um, let's move on to a prayer for illumination. Please join me in a prayer for illumination. Meet us in this moment of proclamation, God. Enlighten us with your spirit. Motivate us with your word. Remind us of your commands. Challenge us to live in your way. Hold us accountable to do more than sing and pray. In Christ, amen. 
The scripture reading is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 28. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have no uh, pre-recorded PCIe fires today. That that I am able to be played. That you can play. Correct. I'm sorry, you couldn't hear it in the back. <laughs> All right, move on. Do your best. Well, this, you know, this Sunday, this is a perfect illustration of how much we are dependent on the uh, technology. It has helped us greatly. And who would guess the world would be out? Caitlin Houston once said, Words are not enough to express the unconditional love between a mother and a child. There is a secret, the secret to humanizing the very harsh and barren world. Picture a friendly face in a faceless crowd. And a collectivity of individuals, all of certain, turn into a community of human beings. And I think their line lies the secret of our mothers. They mediate between us and nature. They mediate between us and humanity. The world is large and terrifying even to a, a newborn baby or a small child. But by rocking in their loving arms, our mothers reminds us, it is okay. You are going to make it. I will always be with you. Mothers close the gap between a baby's hunger and the food that a little baby neither prepares nor eat adequately. Mothers bring us to the shores of the sea of life and put out the orange, very bright orange buoys so that we can wade in safely. 
taking on no more than we can psychologically or emotionally bear. And if they are wise as birds, our mothers know when we can fly, and they kick us out of the nest at a teachable moment. Well, I suppose there's good enough reason for gratitude for our mother and the many carnations that we hold today reflects the sentiment of our deeply thankful heart. However, there seems to be a changing attitude toward motherhood on the part of many women and also the rising number of men. Let's start with the disturbing words that you can find in the Holy Bible, the first Timothy, especially chapter 2, where we read, Let a woman learn in silence and all submissiveness. I permit no woman to teach or have authority over man. She must keep silent, for Adam was first and then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet woman will be saved through bearing children if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with modesty. Well, in the Holy Bible, there are words like this. And what is disturbing is not the statement that women need salvation. Who doesn't? But that motherhood is singled out as the vocation through which woman gains salvation. And that motherhood is directly tied to the subordinate position of a woman. And the subordinate position of woman is tied in turn to the order of creation. First Adam and then Eve. I like to think of the church as a learning community in remedial living. Here in the church, we try to remedy racial relations based on Christ's teaching. Here in the church, we learn that class or classicism is as tough a nut to crack as race. And here in the church, we better learn that in society and the church, the most deep seated prejudice, not the one with the worst effect, but the most profound effect is reflected in Paul's, St. Paul's understanding of first Adam and then Eve. It is one of the most complicated forms of prejudice. Where else does the victim say, I've met the enemy, and he loves me. First Adam, and then Eve. Apostle Paul's view is a direct reflection, I think, of his Jewish milieu, in which he was raised, in which he was educated, in which he developed his worldview. Jewish society was, as you know, especially in ancient Jewish societies, a very patriarchal. From the circumcision to a burial rite, only the male, male member of that society was the true Israelite in every sense of the word. The feminine idea was that of the good wife and a mother becoming a Christian specially baptized by the Holy Spirit and encountered Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus. 
this amazing experience of God didn't noticeably change Apostle Paul's attitude, especially toward the woman. And this view is also seen in the very famous Sigmund Freud's his psychoanalytic theory, which is deeply influenced by the Victorian view of feminine inferiority. But that a man, as a modern, as a bright, as intelligent, as a scientific man, as a Freud, could be so prejudiced, makes the point a case. No prejudice is more deeply seated than the one that we are talking about this morning. Even in America, the history of all scientific truths has been offered right up to the 20th century is to prove psychological and mental inferiority of a woman. African-American male, after all, voted in the United States long before woman did. And the long before woman did in probably many, many of the country of this world. February 26, 1869, the Congress amended 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which allowed African American male can finally vote. But it is almost after 50 years later, August 18th and 1920, woman's right to vote was passed in Congress and thereby the woman will actually participate in the political process. I think it is fair to say that today men and women have more stereotypes about each other than probably racial ethnic stereotypes. How can we make a good and sound theological sense out of this very disturbing passage? To that, I would like to reflect on what they read today from letters of Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, where Apostle Paul says, in all division, all prejudices, all differences are overcome. A new unity is created, and there is a neither Jew nor a Greek, there is a neither slave nor a free, and there is a neither male nor a female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, all nations, all ethnicity, all classes and races and sexes meet as a huge rivers met toward flowing toward the great sea of God's encompassing grace. Grace of Jesus Christ transcend the law, says the Paul. The law was our custodian until Christ came, but now the faith has come. We are no longer under a custodian. Grace of God even transcends the order of creation. There is a neither male nor a female. No longer the Adam first and then Eve applies to today's church. In other words, the grace of God in Jesus Christ transcends sexism, any forms of sexism. Now this raises an interesting question. Will this new status, this new freedom, this new unity be confined solely, solely to the realm of our heart, introspective reality, or will it be implemented outside of the realm of our heart? into the social and political spheres 
of our life? Paul's answer is very interesting and also very ambiguous. As regards neither Greek nor Jew, Paul sees clearly the clear implication for the social realm. He insists and teaches many early Christians, saying that Greeks should not have to be circumcised just like a Jewish male. They don't have to obey Jewish law. Jews and Greeks must sit together all together in the same table, for we are all one in Jesus Christ. However, as regard, neither slave nor free, he seems less concerned with implementing this spiritual freedom in social and political realm. And you know what? The neither male nor female, almost not at all. But let us ask ourselves, who today in Christian church would confine the implication neither slave nor free to the, uh, to an, in an attitude, as an attitude of heart, totally divorced from our social practice or relational practice in our society. If when we read the Bible, we listen to dictates of conscience, then we have to conclude that if there is no continuing revelation of God, there is always continuing social implementation of a once and for all God's revelation. And quite rightly, America has abolished slavery as a social institution. And quite rightly, we seek to implement in the social realm the revelation given to St. Paul that in Christ Jesus, there is a neither male nor female. In other words, what is authority, authoritative for the 21st century church like ours is the revelation of the 1st century church, not the stage and progress of implementation of that revelation they have reached. Need I add it that just as emancipation of African Americans led to full equality, so the emancipation of women will lead to full women's ordination in all Christian denominations throughout the world, even in the Roman Catholic Church. I believe that not even the Pope will escape the benefit of the seminar in remitter living, which is the church at its best. I truly believe that church, we as a church, should live as a movement, as a dynamic movement, but never be satisfied with living as an institution. Christian faith is not an institution that you have to obey doctrine after doctrine and doctrine, then only you are saved. No, Christian faith is a dynamic, transformative power that will change your perception, then change your worldview, and change your goal of life. On this Mother's Day, let us recognize that the woman most in need of liberation is the woman in every man's heart, tamed, yet tamed with all kinds of prejudice. If in Christ there is no male or female, then androgyny can place misogyny. <laughs> Spiritually speaking, motherhood should not be confined to only mothers. When not imposed, but with the Spirit of God, 
when freely chosen, the feminine ideal of fulfilling oneself in the service of caring, nurturing, supporting, encouraging others, is a very fine Christian ideal for everyone should follow, regardless of male or female. At this point, I should hear Amen from the pew. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 No, amen for our Presbyterian Church in Norwood. There is no male or female. Mothers feed hungry children. Shouldn't we all feed the hungry people? Mothers conserve human life. And I truly believe that kind of secret and holy conservatism. Mothers stand like a giving tree for their children and for people who I need. Why shouldn't we make sure that all our children in our church grow up with self-respect and self-esteem? Mothers humanized forbidding word, which is very fitting task and call of Jesus Christ for all Christian people. So dear mothers, in this holy sanctuary, and on this your designated day, we salute you and we sincerely thank you, not by trying to repay your love, but by passing it on with our best ability to others. For the world, our world today, desperately need mothering. Let all of us then be gentle as our mother, be kind and giving and loving like our mothers. Let all of us gladden the heart of children. Let us share their pleasures in the beauty and the wonders of this earth. And let us tell them our love and tell it again our love Tell us still again with a grateful heart that how we are so deeply thankful to our mother and for all their sacrifices. And let us make sure that we also pass that on to our children and younger generation. Sincerely from the bottom of my heart, happy Mother's Day, everyone. Amen. Amen. Let us join our hymn, Seven, Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth. I'm not really familiar with this um, hymn, but let us give our best efforts to sing to honor our mother. Because this was among our presentry hymn that I found is most appropriate. So we're going to give it a try. If you are able, please.
Every year on Mother's Day, we have a little ritual. And since this is my 10th year with this community, I have prayed all different kinds of options of how we can celebrate Mother's Day. So one time we, we, we call upon tallest mother in our congregation and we present them with a beautiful flower. One time we had like, I think Bonnie, you earned that prize with most number of children, mother, and you have four. Or so she won that special flower. And one time we had mother who had the most number, the eldest kid. And we one time we had like mother who had achingly living farthest apart with their kids. And so Midori won that because since her, her children live in Japan. So I've been thinking about this, and so today I would like to ask all mothers, please arise from where you are. All mothers, please. Unfortunately, we are missing a lot of mothers who are sitting in this size in apartments and all of them. Um, and mothers among you who have a children the age of over 40 years old. <laughs> Anybody? 40 years? Okay. Anybody? Mothers who have their kids over 30 years? No? Okay. What about a mother who has their kids over 20 years old? Angela, you are disqualified. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, mother who have their kids over 10 years old. If you have a kid over 10 years old, please sit down. Oh, if I have one. Yeah, if you have, I'm sorry, lack of that communication. So we have two of them. Okay, mother who, have, who has a kid over 8 years old. Okay, mother who have a kid over five years old. Oh, I'm sorry, Mora. <laughs> mother, okay then, Monica, you are the only one who is standing. So you are officially at this point in our church the youngest mother who also have a youngest kid. Daniel is over two year old. What months? Two years and seven months. <laughs> well, I would like on behalf of our congregation, would like to present these beautiful flowers to youngest mother. I would like to our congregation members join with me in a prayer of blessing for our mothers. And let's just face our face for them. And let us reach out our hand for them. Okay, mothers will sit next to you and sit around you as we offer a blessing prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we know your love because we have mothers and women caregivers in our life. We thank you for the mothers and caregivers who carried us in their warmth, nourishing, protecting, and bringing us into this world. We thank you for the mothers who did not give birth to us, yet loved us just the same way, if not anymore. With great gratitude, we remember their words of encouragement when we have felt unsure or afraid. We thank you for their kindness when the world has treated us unkindly. We thank you for their soft and comforting arms and the gentle way that they kissed away our tears. We thank you that they protect us with the fierceness of a lioness protect, protecting her cubs. 
We thank you for the times when they corrected us rather than letting us continue down the wrong path. Help us to live so that their love and their investment in us might not be in vain. We honor our mothers and women caregivers with the lives of service to you in the name of the written Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. Let us give them a powerful gratitude of applause. Mother's Day. We move on to a community sharing time. Any church announcement this morning? Yes, fine. Just a reminder, the session meeting tomorrow, I think out the agenda and uh, minutes from last meeting. Also, the Zoom link that you had from last month was right for me. Yes, I will update the time and so just keep that Zoom link. And um, we prepared a special like PPT advertisement about Lakeside Coraliers. Uh, which the movie has been a long time dedicated member. And twice a year or sometimes once a year, they offer a wonderful music concert. And that will happen next Sunday, 3 p.m. in Park Ridge uh, somewhere. And so um, we'll put on next week again, but just mark your calendar, and if you're available, uh, that would be a wonderful concert to enjoy. Uh, we have also a new members class, three sessions, starting from this coming Thursday, May 16th, and next Thursday, 23rd and 30th at 8 p.m., one hour <laughs> Zoom sessions. So please, uh, the Zoom link will be sent on Monday, and so keep it well and be participating there. And also this coming Saturday, there will be an annual conference for Korean schools of Northeast region. Uh, it will be held in our education building, and uh, it will be a very meaningful sort of uh, gathering. It will be a good time for also promoting our church among Korean Americans will live around the areas, and many people also will come New York and Connecticut to participate in this. And I have also one great news. Um, we have one mem members. Uh, I mentioned her name, Jin Kim, who is a worshiping member of Second Worship, a Korean worship. I just got a phone call or a notification yesterday that she had passed a New Jersey bar exam. So that is just a big round of congratulatory applause. And, uh, and so, you know, our church is not a big church, but as far as I know, extended family members who are our member family members, we have like at least Lindsay and Thomas and Marley and my daughter Grace and also Carol. Carol, you're, um, you have also one law school student or is she an attorney yet? Yeah. She is? She is a lawyer now. Okay, so we have like five people at least. <laughs> And, and I think this is not a, just an accident. I think our church probably can offer something very unique with this wonderful gift. Um, you know, so uh, I think on the second worship um, that we would probably celebrate after the worship for that accomplishment. Um, and any joys and concern this morning? Always in concern? Okay, yes, no. Um, I ask that we remember in our prayers two mothers facing their first Mother's Day without their children. Their names are Susan and Kathy. 
friends of ours who lost children in the oh. last few months. Okay, thank you for sharing. Oh, boy, may you guys presence and encouragement and observation be with them. Any other joys and concern? Yes. Yes, uh, I don't know if you know the split that I've been here for two weeks. Uh, he's been very ill with allergies and breathing problems, so their prayers for him will recover soon. Yeah, it is also a quite difficult time personally, right? After also Sophia is now walking in West Coast and big change. Big change. I hope he's doing well. Okay. And anybody else? Yes, fine. I just kind of had a reflection on your, your sermon because being one of the elders in the community, I would reflect to my father who had six children and never changed a diaper. And so, <laughs> and so my oldest daughter, when we were visiting down in Florida, and he did it backwards. And I reflect on the fathers of today who are much more involved in the motherly sense and and those who various circumstances are also the father and the mother yes yes and and yeah <laughs> but I, you know that's a christ christ mandate <laughs> um yes the oh, joy i got the garden planted before the rain <laughs> <laughs> You know, Dave has a really well flourishing uh, garden, well protected, and only a dare animal can intrude, right? Your sacred space there. Curse those chipmunks. Oh, here? I think he has a good fortitude, fortified uh, fence. And, uh, okay, great. Shall we join uh, together in prayer? Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the promise that you never let go of us. We may be prone to wonder, but keep your steady eyes on us as loving parents. Loving parents and especially mothers do. With their wandering toddlers. It's reassurance like this that we hold on to when we struggle. Yet there are times when we believe the lies that we can be separated from your love. We think that something we did or did not do is powerful enough to destroy the sovereign grace of you that you have for us. When we are in those places, remind us that your grace conquered the grave, your grace conquered racism, sexism, and all kinds of discrimination. There is truly nothing that can separate us from your love. As we head into this week, we pray for those who are hurting, especially, especially uh, Susan and Kathy, who celebrates Mother's Day for the first time without their kids. We pray for mothers and locally and globally, we pray for people, especially at this time in Gaza and Ukraine, where war rages on. We pray for the humbling of leaders. May the quest for power be converted into the quest for human dignity, peace, and basic safety for people. We pray for those who are sad. There is much to grieve, whether it is a loss of the loved one, or job, or friendship, or relationship. Please be with Cliff as he is struggling with his health. And for whatever forms of that struggle, O oh God, give him courage and strength. Show comfort to those who mourn in your timing. May their mourning be turned into dancing once again. We celebrate with those who are in the midst of joy, we thank you for those who are celebrating the birth of a newborn baby recently. Leo Joseph Lafferty and Ariel Norman Alberson. Just bless upon them and their life journey. We have people who are celebrating anniversaries, birthdays, and those who have accomplished their long-time goals. 
for those who are simply just feeling good. May their joy be contagious and a source of good news to our holy world. On this special day, set aside to honor mothers. We ask for a special touch from the Lord for each and every one of them. May each mother and mothering person in this sanctuary be granted a special blessing. And may all the work of their hands not be forgotten in your sight. Let their example of love of her children be a guiding face, guiding force in their lives. And may wisdom be passed down to the next generations of mothers and caregivers. Loving God, may you bless us this coming week, and may we look for ways to see your love and grace in those people around us. We pray all this in Jesus Christ's name. For the power us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us present our offerings with a grateful and joyful heart before God, so that the ministry of motherly care and nurturing and encouraging others may continue from this community and beyond.
brought us to birth by His Spirit, strengthen us for the Christian life. May the Lord who provide for all our need sustain us day by day. May the Lord whose steadfast love is constant as a mother's care send us out to live and work for others in this world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.